The Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab has been heavily criticised by some for saying that the anti-racism gesture known as taking the knee seemed like a symbol of subordination rather than one of liberation. He added that he thought the gesture had possibly come from the television drama Game of Thrones. Following a wave of negative reaction, Mr Raab insisted he had full respect for the Black Lives Matter movement. Our political editor Laura Koonsberg has the story. The pitch became a site of protest, kneeling to show strength and sympathy in the fight for black rights. Echoing last night, the stance, the anger of protesters around the world and here at home. Yet the full story seemed rather to have passed the foreign secretary by. I, I understand um, this sense of frustration and restlessness which is driving the Black Lives Matters movement. I've got to say on this taking the knee thing, which I don't know, maybe it's got a broader history, but it seems to be taken from the Game of Thrones, it feels to me like a symbol of subjugation and subordination rather than one of liberation and emancipation. Uh, but I understand people feel differently about it, so it's a matter of personal choice. So would you or wouldn't you do it? Take the knee for two people, the Queen and, and the Mrs when I uh, asked her to marry me. There is a broader history. A few years ago, the American football star Colin Kaepernick angered Donald Trump but inspired supporters by kneeling rather than standing for the American anthem to protest against discrimination. But it's a modern echo of the public prayer of civil rights leaders like Martin Luther King. Labour's less than impressed. A lot of people in the black community felt very, very let down and hurt by the flippant tone that the Foreign Secretary took this morning. Um, at a time when a lot of people in the black community are grieving over loved ones that they've lost and very, very anxious about the future and really reeling from those images of George Floyd over in America. We've got to see a more serious approach. The Foreign Secretary wrote later that he has full respect for the Black Lives Matter movement, saying... If people wish to take a knee, that's their choice, and I respect it, calling for everyone to come together to tackle discrimination. Ministers have said again and again they understand the frustration felt by those who came here and elsewhere to demand an end to racism. But this less-than-diplomatic choice of words by our diplomat-in-chief adds to the sense of frustration among those who believe the understanding in government is not complete and that even though there have been years of promises, progress has been far too slow. Now is the time to get the government's knee off the neck of the black, African, Caribbean, Asian, minority ethnic communities. Foreign Secretary, would you like to say anything about the uh, taking the knee issue? The Foreign Secretary chose not to add any more comment this afternoon. When strong feelings are stirred, perhaps our politicians might be advised to always proceed with care. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. And as we've been reporting consistently, the killing of George Floyd, an African-American being detained by police in Minneapolis, has led to demonstrations around the world, including here in the UK, where it's also prompted black people to share their experiences of treatment by the police. According to the latest figures for England and Wales, black people are almost ten times more likely to be stopped and searched than white people, and three times more likely to be arrested. The government has announced the Commission into Racial Inequality, but as my colleague Clive Myrie reports now, many are calling for action and not words. Racism can manifest as crude, but when subtle, it causes the same pain. It's 12 o'clock on a bright summer's day and a motorist is stopped by a police patrol in Cambridgeshire looking for drug dealers. And the reason I stopped you, yeah. no offence to you, but you're a, you're a black male, OK? I'm not going to lie to you. So it's racist right? you stopped me. I'm not saying that at all. The so reason I've stopped you, I'll, I'll explain if you let me finish. For a long, long time. The driver's name is Ryan and he doesn't want to show his face. Police have stopped him more than 20 times in the last several years. He says the video can be summed up in one word. Disgusting. When I very first came to Ely, um, I got stopped by a police officer just before I started driving, I was on foot. And he said, you're a new face around here, I haven't seen you before, but I'm just going to give you a little warning. Just because you're black, you're small black, you will get stopped by the police around here. The footage is five years old, but George Floyd's death in America prompted Ryan's sister to put it online, where it's been seen millions of times. The Independent Office for Police Conduct is investigating Cambridgeshire Police. Countless inquiries and reports tell us again and again racism is a problem in our society. The Brixton riots led to Lord Scarman's indictment of racial disadvantage in inner cities. The killing of Stephen Lawrence saw McPherson's castigation of the Met Police as institutionally racist. Discrimination in the workplace, 
deaths in police custody, bias across wider society, and the criminal justice system all got the same treatment. Bias in schools and the Windrush Review. Yet few recommendations have been implemented and now more and more videos are appearing online highlighting problems with the police. Right, listen, open the vehicle, please, or we are going to have to put the windows in. Naomi Bennett's car has been stopped late at night. Officers have blocked her path with their patrol vehicle in what's called a hard stop. There's something in here something in that like you are what? trying to hide. Like what? Frightened, she refuses to comply and is arrested and held in a cell for 18 hours. But nothing illegal was found in her car and her conviction for obstructing the police has been overturned. An injury to me. The officers had no clue who they were stopping. Boris, can you just say hello to my son? Yes, what's his name? His name's Meshach. Meshach, hello Meshach, how are Naomi you? was awarded the British Empire Medal for services to nursing and went to Downing Street. All the police saw, she says, was her skin colour. And especially when I explained to the officer that I am a nurse and um, I'm not a criminal, and they didn't accept that and they progressed it and then they ended up taking me back to the station and locked me up. Um, I don't think that would happen to a white person. Justice! No! The Met Police says it's assessing Naomi's complaint. But to understand racism, you have to try to walk in other shoes. Reporting on the Black Lives Matter marches, I came across many who'd been judged by the police. I've never been stopped, but I regularly get racist abuse as an employee of the BBC. The vilification isn't in the mind, it isn't about perceptions, it's real. Listen to barrister Leon Lynch, stopped seven times in his life by police, the first when he was 14 and the last time aged 25 by armed officers. But the whole time throughout that incident, I remember thinking to myself, here I am, a young, black, articulate man who knows the law who knows the law and yet I'm powerless to stop these officers. How many people are placed in situations like that that don't know the law, aren't well spoken, haven't been taught their rights by their parents beforehand? And it, 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 it scares you. In the wake of George Floyd's death, too many black people here say a few bad officers are tainting everyone. Events in America may have triggered a reckoning on both sides of the Atlantic. Clive Myrie, BBC News.